Right, so now, what if you've drawn your graph, MATLAB, Octiv, R, whatever, and you just want to use that more or less as is in your LaTeX document? So this is probably the most common thing. Let me go back to the notes. What you have to do is to then think of using that graph via PostScript and PDF. And I'll explain a bit more about that as follows. Right, so you draw the graph, then export to PostScript, convert to PDF, include in the LaTeX. That's the procedure. Now, one thing you'll note about this is I explicitly recommend to you that you do not export it to bit imaged formats such as ping, GIF, TIFF, or JPEG, except for JPEG at the end, which I'll comment on a bit later. Right, bit image formats, uh, I've got loads of dis disadvantages. They're poor quality, they often take a lot of disk space, and why would you use them anyway when you can use PostScript and PDF? My mind boggles actually that so many people still use these formats for scientific graphs. Right? You should be using a vector formatted information such as provided by PostScript and included within PDF. <laughs> Okay, so the generic thing is to create the postscript. Basically because this is about the oldest, most uh, longest lasting route that your software package will have coded and it's usually the most reliable and usually the best. Also, note here, most publishers still require postscript figures. You'll see this time and time again in their instructions. Provide the postscript figures. And you might think, oh, I don't have to save postscript, I just need PDF. When you get around to submitting, you'll still need the postscript. So get it in the first instance. Don't bother trying to avoid this step. Okay, um, how do we get it? In It depends upon the computer language. So for example, to draw this figure, this graphic, or this one um, in MATLAB, you do the following sort of stuff. So here are basically the MATLAB commands to do all the machinations to draw the figure, and oh yeah, then a command to draw the plot with some various options. Now it, no axes, make it scaled. Then the key thing is use the print command to save the file as an EPS file. The D minus D means device, EPS means postscript, the C means color, and the two means a second generation, which is sort of optional. Then you give it the name and then MATLAB will save it as a cantor.eps uh, file. Uh, you could use MATLAB to text if you wanted, in which case the simplest invocation is just that. Okay, so that will generate a EPS file, something like this. And same for the cock curve. Right. Use the print command to postscript. Now, for some reason, the PDF LaTeX does not support postscript graphics. Nonetheless, the journals will require you to have it. So what do you do? So you convert the postscript into PDF yourself. Um, there's loads of packages to do this, including the public domain PS2 PDF program. which you can automate. And the result is uh, 
in this case, two PDF files, which I've shown you. This is cantor.pdf and this is the cock.pdf file. It's got our graphics in there. Okay. Now, the only time when you should consider not going via e postscript is if it's a photograph, as I did earlier, or because it's a surface plot with smooth graduations, so it's rather like a photograph. So if it's sort of photograph equality, then convert to JPEG rather than PDF. Maybe. Don't rush into it though. Okay, so then as I've described before, use package graphic X in the preamble and provides you with an include graphics command that pulls in a nominated graphics file from your disk. And we generally include that within a figure environment, begin figure, end figure, with caption and label. Now, in the include graphics, do not bother including the extension. And one reason for doing is you, you'll be using PDF LaTeX, right? The old late, the non-PDF LaTeX is, you know, at least 20 years out of date by now. So you want the include graphics command to bring in the PDF, the .PDF version. It will do that. Uh, without you specifying the .pdf. We then want to give the source to the journal to publish. For some reason, a lot of journals still seem to be using the old LaTeX, not PDF LaTeX. So they will be inputting the source, which is PostScript. And if you specify the source is file name .pdf, then it won't work. It won't look for the PostScript if you've said it's .pdf. If you just put the file name without the dot extension, it will look for whatever graphics file is suitable for what's being run, whether it's LaTeX or PDF LaTeX. So LaTeX will get the postscript, PDF LaTeX will get the PDF. Don't put the extension in. Okay, now some of you, some of you will want to scale the picture up and down. This can be done and in limited circumstances, it's useful. So for example, to scale a picture down to 90% of the size it's drawn, you can include that as an optional argument to include graphics. You just put it within square brackets, scale is 0.9. So let's see that in an example. Chunk, fine, include enough. So I've included the cantor set at full size, but the cock curve I've included at 90%. And I've forgotten that I hadn't downloaded that. So let's put that away and try again. Okay, so where are these figures? There we are. Here's the cantor set, that's its full size, that's good. And here's the cock curve figure, scaled down to 90%. That's fine. Okay, so scaling between 90% and 110% is probably fine. Uh, even scaling between 0.8 and 1.2 is probably okay. But avoid any more drastic scaling. Um, the usual thing people want to do is to scale things down by to half size or quarter size. And the result is generally awful. So do not do it. The solution is to generate the graphs at about the same size as they are to appear. Um, that just takes you one command in whatever language you're using. What people 
do, and I, my mind boggles because the results are truly awful. What people do is they don't realize that they can generate the graphs at a smaller scale. They say, oh, I want to scale this picture down to half its size. I can't read the text. I know, I'll draw it with big text. Ah, but then you can't see the lines. So, oh, I'll better draw it with big lines, thick lines. And then the tick marks can't be read. Oh, I'll better make the ticks, uh, the tick lines thicker. And the labels are the annotations. They need bigger annotations and so on. So they start coding half a dozen different things that have to be bigger instead of simply the one statement, draw this at a smaller size. Um, oh, I should say they usually cock it up. So the sort of appalling results that get generated are things such as this, right? Um, okay, so this is in a document from a highly leading journal. Uh, and you can see the sort of size of the body text. So it's like this. Right, that's what the captions and the labels of the figures should be. And you look at these figures and you just can't read them. You can read the body text perfectly fine, but not the captions or the labels. And in fact, there's even curves there you can't really see. Right, because they're too thin, they've been shrunk to about one third of size. Let's zoom in and we can see, we can see the information. Or, or can we? Why can't we see the info? It's because the authors used a bit image format. So the information's been lost. It's just don't do this. Draw the graphic at the size it is to appear. If you want three graphics side by side like this, make sure they're about that size in the first place when you draw them. Um, so that was pretty awful. But there are, you can go to almost any example on the web and you see even worse examples. So here's one here. Oops, let me make it a bit bigger. Okay, so top three lines and the figure caption, that's the stand, that's the body text size. So we can read that information clearly. So we should be able to read the information on the graph clearly, clearly. And we can't, right? The graphs have been drawn too big and then they've been shrunk down to impossible to read. What's more, there's even this grotesque titles of these three things. There's this tau h, log 10, a, and u. And that's huge. I mean, how they ever thought that this was a good graphic to draw, I don't know. How the journal ever thought it was a good graphic to reproduce, I don't know. I mean, the stuff I copy edit, you know, in fact, 80% of the articles I copy edit, I send it back to the authors and say, redraw at least one graph. So this is just, do not do this. That's just terrible. Okay. So how do you get a graphic of the same size it is to appear? So the sort of thing you do is you tell the uh, program that's drawing the graphic to only use a specific size. And in MATLAB, there's various ways of doing this. And a convenient way is to use subplot position and then 0.2.2, you can change that to anything you like actually. The key things are 0.55 and 0.55. And this tells it to use 55% of the area it would otherwise use. And this means that in MATLAB, the graphic is now at a size that can be included in most documents. Okay, and that's in, have I got it here? Yes, this is in drawing the Cantor set. I've got that command there. And you might want to make 0.55 to be 0.6. It's not crucial. You are allowed small scaling, but it's got to be something like that. Uh, in Maple, 
um, there's a command something like this, where the key thing is you're saying um, generate an output file from the plot and make it of a specified height and width. Right, and you control that to be about what you need for the documents that you're going to produce. So having created it at about the right side, remember that for reproducible research, always code into a script the commands that generate a graphic. And it's not just for other people, it's also for your own sanity. What you'll find as you do your research is you'll have to draw and redraw and redraw this graphic as you go on in time. You'll draw the graphic and say, oh yeah, that's, that's good, that's got the message. Then you do your further research and say, oh, I've got to just modify that message a bit. So you redraw the graphic. You go further on, oh, I need to redraw the graphic. You submit to a journal and you need to redraw the graphic. Maybe it's a two column journal typeset. Uh, whatever, it could be you've, you've got to redraw the graphic. This could be one, two years later. Right? You've forgotten what it is you had to do to get the graphic. And the only way to not forget is to make sure you code into a script the commands that generate that graphic. So you may use a graphical user interface to you know, get it just right. But at that stage, you have to say, okay, now do I, how do I code the commands that will get it just right like this and do that coding. All right, so they're the main points about drawing graphs. Um, pay attention to it and you'll be generating good graphs as opposed to a lot of the rubbish which you see. So let's stop there.